What is coalition efficiency and why is it important? Hi, I'm Sarah Davis. I've been working in the fields of public health or prevention for the past 25 years. Much of that time has been spent working with coalitions, groups of individuals and organizations that have come together to seek changes. Whether it was a change in policy, a behavior change or transformational systems change, the power of the coalition was that we were working together to accomplish what none of us could accomplish alone. This video will explore the concept of efficiency and how it contributes to having an effective coalition. I encourage you to download and refer to the six elements of Effective Coalitions Resource Toolkit developed by the Prevention Technology Transfer Center. You can find the toolkit at PTTC Network. Dot org. Coalition efficiency refers to the work ethic and task focus of the coalition and the coalition's ability to operate in a well-organized and effective manner. Efficiency is important because coalitions are often working with limited resources and require nimbleness to respond to a quick and changing timeline. So let's talk a little more about limited resources. As you've likely experienced, individuals are stretched thin. We typically have multiple demands on our time from work, taking care of our families, other volunteer or social commitments, as well as the time we need to exercise, rest, and take care of ourselves. Many people are also dealing with high levels of stress due to their experiences with poverty, joblessness, homelessness, addiction, mental illness, discrimination, or violence in their homes or community. The emotional and psychological stressors impact our ability to contribute to the change efforts underway in our communities, even if they're issues that we care about. All of this makes coalition efficiency critical. Typically, the budgets that coalitions have to operate are minimal. They require us to rely heavily on volunteer contributions and to be creative and strategic with our tactics. Finally, our ability to gain and keep the attention of the public and decision makers is limited. People have short attention spans and are inundated with news and messaging from multiple directions. We need to be able to deliver captivating messages and to capitalize on opportunities that present themselves when a topic related to our issue is receiving media attention. Likewise, we may only have a few opportunities to have an audience with those who have the power to enact some of the changes we're seeking. Whether it's the school principal, a legislator, the police chief, or the public housing residency advisory board, you may only have one opportunity to present your case. You want to be compelling and ready to take that chance when it presents itself. Now that we understand the importance of efficiency for our coalition, how do we achieve it? Let's look at four strategies. Go slow to go fast. Use people's time well establish a decision-making process, and communicate often. Go slow to go fast. Spend time early on building relationships and trust with your coalition partners. Time spent on the front end building authentic relationships can help you avoid costly and damaging infighting, turf wars, or feelings of distrust later on. The trust that you build early on pays off in the coalition's ability to share workloads and credit, make decisions and respond quickly to emerging situations, and to capitalize on the innovation and power that comes from a high-functioning group of people working toward a common vision. I found this maxim to pay off especially when the coalition will be involved in activities that require quick decision-making or a quick turnaround on something. In coalitions I've been a part of that were working on policy change, there likely comes a point when something happens. An article gets published, the hearing gets moved up a day, a weaker competing policy gets introduced, or one of the policymakers we previously had in our support column now seems a little shaky on their vote. All of a sudden, the coalition needs to react or take action. It's often not possible to pull the full group together, so having trust that you and your partners are on the same page is critical. Knowing that whichever organization gets the call from the reporter or the bill sponsor is going to carry a message that is supported by the group is huge. 
It takes time to build that level of trust, and it's much easier to build the trust before you're in crisis response mode. The same goes for coalitions where organizations may be applying for funding for the work of the coalition. Funding opportunities can come up quickly with a short deadline. I just completed a proposal on behalf of a network of 10 partners. It wasn't possible to have every partner fully review the proposal. Thankfully, we've been working together for eight years now and have built solid trusting relationships over that time. I felt supported by the group and they expressed trust in me to act in good faith on behalf of the group. And wow, the next time you're trying to collect letters of support from community partners for a grant you're submitting by the end of the week, you will be so happy for all the relationships you've taken the time to build. Use people's time well. We all have multiple demands on our time. And one of the most important ways we can show our coalition partners that we respect them is by using their time well. So get clear on your purpose, what you want to achieve from a meeting before you hold one, and use that purpose to drive your meeting agenda. Be thoughtful about how best to use the time you have people together. It's likely more valuable to use the time to engage, gather input, create plans collectively with coalition members, rather than to provide them with a long list of updates. Finally, consider how you might segment your coalition so that those most active, passionate members meet regularly as a steering committee while you engage other more casual supporters or busy but important community influencers or decision makers on an as-needed basis. Establish a decision-making process. Making decisions are central to the work that any collective body does. Determining a shared vision, defining the problem, selecting an approach, all of these rely on discussion and decision making. Determine the process for making decisions before a critical decision needs to be made. This allows the coalition to be nimble and respond quickly when a situation is urgent or evolving quickly. The policy example I shared before is relevant here as well. When I was working with coalitions to have their city council or county commissioners pass a smoke-free ordinance to protect people from secondhand smoke in indoor places, it was common for there to be last minute negotiations. The champion the coalition was working with on the council would call to propose some change in the law in order to get another council member's support, maybe asking for the law to not go into effect for a year after passage. And the coalition would need to decide quickly what position we would take. So having an agreed upon decision-making process in place is critical when you need to move fast and when emotions are high. Finally, communicate often. Communication before and after a meeting helps keep members on the same page, even if they weren't able to attend the meeting. It can save you valuable time as you avoid endless recaps, rehashing the same discussions, or backtracking on decisions made during previous meetings. Pre-meeting communication should prepare members for upcoming discussion topics and decisions to be made. This helps ensure the right people are at the meeting and that they're prepared to take action. After the meeting, follow up to document key decisions made and next steps. And with great communication, you can sometimes avoid a meeting altogether. Keep your communication succinct, compelling, and frequent. This keeps your broad coalition well-informed but not overwhelmed, and for those who aren't able to regularly participate in meetings, they're still up to speed when you need to call on them to take action. The six elements of effective coalitions has additional tools to help you assess the efficiency of your coalition. What will you commit to doing to maximize the efficiency of your coalition? <laughs>